So, um, ladies and gentlemen, in this case, what we have previously worked on is solving one inequality, which you know I pretty much um, related to solving an equation. And the way that we solved equations was, or I'm sorry, inequalities was exactly the same way that we solved um, equations, except for there's two different things that made them different. Whenever we applied the operation of multiplying, dividing by a negative number, then um, that made we had to make sure we flipped the sign as well as our solution, we had to make sure we graphed our solution because our solution usually involved more than one uh, solution. So we went to our number line to represent the solution. In compound inequalities, um, here's one way that we represent an and compound inequality. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you guys um, kind of the longer way to really understand what we're talking about. And then I'll show you kind of a, a different way to solve this as well. The first way that I prefer to have these solved just for the understanding fact of solving them, is to break this up into a compound, in, to break this up into an inequality with your conjoining statement, which is and. So what we basically do is just cover up one end, and we just write negative 6 is less than 2x minus 4. And the reason why I like breaking it up is because I like to use my conjoining statement. This is what we call an and compound inequality. And it's very important for, important for Tansy for you guys to see this and. Because when we talk about graphing, and is going to become very important. So I covered this up. Now I cover this up. And I say 2x minus 4 is less than 12. So the middle part remains the same. It's just you cover up one side of the inequality on each end. Now I have two inequalities. And I solve them just like, you, just like we did last class period. I'll add 4 here. Add 4. Negative 2 is less than 2x. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. Negative 1 is less than x. Over here, I add 4. 2x is less than 16. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. x is less than 8. Now, the issue, though, that comes into solving it like this, yes? So there's a couple issues with this. First of all is we need to remember we flip the sign when we multiply or divide by a negative number. And I'm going to try to do a problem that will be similar to that. But just notice, yeah, it's OK if I'm dividing into a negative number or multiplying into a negative number. But as long as my divisor or multiplier is positive, we don't have to flip the sign. It's only when the divisor or multiplier is negative that we flip the sign. Um, the other problem with this is a lot of you guys might have gotten used to, oh, the graphing part. And a lot of times you have trouble with test points or you don't want to spend the time doing test points. So you just say, someone probably you know, said, oh, wherever the arrow's pointing, that's where you shade, right? It's like, oh, it's pointing to the left, so you shade to the left. And yes, for this one, that is true. For this one, that is false. The reason being is that it works when the variable is on the left side of the inequality statement. So one way you can do that is to flip this inequality. x is greater than negative 1. Okay? So these are the same thing. It's just now the variable is written on the left-hand side. So now we go ahead and graph. Now to graph this, I'm going to want to make sure I can include a number line that's going to include the number 8 as well as include the number um, negative 1. So I'll do 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3, negative 4. Okay, I mean it can it's arbitrary guys what your number line looks like. We just want to make sure we include points that are at 8 and include points that are at negative 1. All right? Now, let's look at the inequality symbols um, because we could obviously use test points to determine if these are open or closed, but I believe the easiest way to do that is just look at the inequality symbol and what we talked about two class periods ago, these are going to produce open or closed points. Open points. They are not a part of the solution. Let me show you again why. To make that true, negative 1. Negative 1 is greater than negative 1. Is negative 1 greater than negative 1? Is negative 1 greater than negative 1? Yeah. No, it's equal to. So that's false. So that means negative 1 is not a part of the solution. So we leave it open. That's the same case over here. We leave it open. All right. Now, I'll show you guys test points next, uh, next problem. For this problem, it's just saying val x. this inequality is true for values of x that are less than 8. Obviously, you guys can see the numbers to the left are going to be less than. So I'm going to do a little test graph going to the left. This one says all values that are greater than negative 1. 
we can obviously see the numbers to the right are greater than negative 1. Now, the reason why I like writing this as an AND and not doing it the other way, which I'm going to show you, is because AND needs to trigger to you what we talked about. AND, is, um, and deals with the intersection. We're not concerned about a point 9. Is 9 true for one of these inequalities? Yeah, it's true for this one. x is greater than negative 1. But 9 is not true for both inequalities. And when you're dealing with AND, the solution set is only going to be the points that are true for both inequalities. A lot of times we call the intersection. So you can see that the intersection is only true between these two values. So now I can take my eraser and just kind of erase the rest of what I had here. And that would be my final graph. OK? That's it.